Oh, doggy. I buzzed my rear butt so bad on the, drop down? On the drop down. <laughs> so bad, dude. Funny. Dude, this bike is a beast. That's my first time on a Fox 38. That was insane. How was the switchblade? It was good. It's been a minute since you've ridden the switchblade, right? Yeah, it has. It's probably been six months at least. What'd you think? It's, a, it feels longer even though it's not like wheelbase wise. Interesting. That, probably, this feels more playful, but I'm sure it's because it's a size small. Yeah, it's interesting. So we're on a size small Firebird with like a 455-ish reach, right? Yeah, four, 445 reach. Oh, did I say 55? Yeah, 445 yeah. reach. And I want to say the reach on that switchblade is 450, okay. if I remember correctly. So just a little bit longer on the medium switchblade. You've been riding the Firebird for about a month and a half now? Yeah, about a, yeah, something close to that. Yeah. What do you think the differences are between the two? The Firebird definitely feels deeper. Um, it is a size small, so I think it has that more nimble feel. It's just quick, like it's, it's super, it's not twitchy, but it's fast. You can maneuver it really good compared to the, this is a little bit more hard to get out of the way, I should say. Like it's just, yeah, it less, a little bit longer. Less willing to, to get out of the way, yeah. But I'm I, sure if you got a size small in this, like that would change things up as well, so. Yeah, but, I think you're right. Super deep, like this bike is deep, but it pedals really well. Like you can hammer on the flats. But then when you get in the chunky stuff, it still has a good, good mannerism. Like it just doesn't buck you offline or anything like that because it's 165 millimeters of travel. Like it's yeah, it's nice. I was shocked at how how fun it was still. Yeah, like for a big bike, I've never ridden a bike totally this big that's this fun. But totally damp and controlled. That was fun. Yep. All right, let's get on the lower stuff and see how it handles. What's up, guys? I just got back from my ride on the new 2021 Pivot. Firebird. This thing is so much fun. I love it when I get opportunities to ride big bikes. I've had this one for over a week now, been riding it. Man, I was really surprised by a few things on this bike. I kind of thought looking at the numbers that we were going to be in that Yeti SB150 category, that kind of Santa Cruz mega tower category. And I was shocked to find out this is actually a pretty fun trail bike. So it is a long travel bike, 165 in the rear. 170 up front it's slack 64 degree head tube angle on that front fork and uh, on this size small it's 76 uh, degree seat tube angle yeah i said size small i sometimes fluctuate between small and medium bikes but i almost always gravitate toward a medium bike i'm five foot eight 145 pounds but man this new bike is long so in the size small the reach is 444 millimeters and that seat tube angle at 76 in the size small it just, it feels like the right distance. It's actually a really similar size to my personal bike, which is a Rocky Mountain Altitude. It, it's, it's shocking actually that this size small fits me. The medium is really pretty big. So if you're 5'10", I think you're gonna be on a medium for sure. Hopefully you get a chance to demo it, but if you don't, that's what I'm here for. I'll share my experience with you test riding this bike over the last week. Love the color too. Can you believe this beautiful orange bike? comes in a kind of a greenish gray color as well. We're gonna talk about how it climbs, how it descends, and who this bike is for. And I'm gonna compare it to a couple other bikes that are kind of in this category. Um, before we do, I'm just gonna let you know who today's video sponsor is. If you've been watching the channel for the last six months, Lab Austere Hip Packs has been sponsoring the channel. I've been wearing this thing for a couple years now. I never leave home without it when I'm going for a ride. It holds two water bottles has just enough space, like I said, it's a minimalist hip pack, so it's just enough space for like your tools, uh, a tube, a extra, you know, spare, uh, you know, candy or little treat or goose or something that you can put in there. And then, you know, your air chuck and your, your stands dart or whatever you, whatever you ride with, my tools are back there. The two things that I love about this hip pack is I can grab my water bottle, you know, take a drink and reholster while I'm riding. Not very many bikes you can just 
in the middle of pedaling, just grab your water bottle and take a drink. And then number two is it rides all the way off my back. It's not riding on my back like a backpack or like how most lumbar hip packs ride. This hangs off of me like a, like a construction worker's uh, tool belt. It's so minimalist and so not on your back that it's just like it's not even there. It's incredible. So thank you to Lab Austairs for sponsoring the channel, making videos like this possible. They are also offering 25% off discount right now for our viewers. So use promo code yum yum at checkout for 25% off. Uh, there's a link in the description down below. Go get yourself a hip pack before Christmas comes. It's the best. All right, let's talk Firebird. For those of you who've been watching the channel, the Firebird, the first time I ever rode it two generations ago, it was a 27.5 wheel size bike and it was that bright red, beautiful bright red color. Uh, and it just was, it was this incredible, like heavy duty go charge trail bike, right? Well, then it changed over the years and they came out with the second version of the Firebird, right? And I didn't get along with that one so well. It was kind of that tan color and the blue color. I think it had like a 65 degree head tube angle. So at the time that was pretty slack and it was pretty awesome. But for me, I just didn't get along with it. I always felt like I was sitting on the top of that bike and I wasn't in the bike and it just felt, I don't know, just I didn't click with it real well. Um, and at the time I really liked the Yeti SB 150 out so much better than that bike. That's always been like the king of the long travel bikes for me. So I just didn't, I just didn't get along with the previous Firebird. Now this one, they changed a few things. They dropped that shock down to this lower shock mount position like they did on the Switchblade and the Trail 429. That gives it an even more like controlled and uh, damp feel in my opinion. Um, made space for a water bottle. Uh, they didn't have a water bottle on the previous Firebird. Um, but, but this one's got it. And, uh, and then they changed up the geometry a little bit. And this is, I mean, this is just about, I mean, this is trail bike geometry in my opinion, 76 degree seat tube angle, 64 degree head tube angle. I mean, I thought this was going to feel like a lot bigger bike. I was, I was thinking, you know, Yeti SB 150 and, uh, Santa Cruz mega tower, but honestly, it's a lot more like the Rocky mountain altitude which to me, it's a big, you know, long travel bike, go smash some crazy downhills at mock chicken speeds. But no, this has really good manners on my everyday trails. Just like my, my personal bike is a Rocky Mountain Altitude. The reason why I pick it is because I love owning a big bike, but I don't really ride chunky, scary trails at 30 miles per hour all the time. So this bike is a lot more rewarding to ride than the Yeti SB150 or the Mega Tower on kind of more normal day-to-day -day trails that we have more access to, right? And this type of stuff that I ride before I go to work, for example. So this bike feels quick and kind of, I mean, I hate to use the word nimble, but it kind of does feel nimble. It's got these incredibly short chain, straight, chain stays, 431 on a size small. And that's another thing to note about Pivot. They gave a ton of thought to this build or uh, this before they engineered this new Firebird each chain stay between the sizes. So the large chain stay is longer than the small and the medium and then the extra large are all different uh, lengths. They also have slightly different geometry up here as well, right? So as you get longer on the bike, so an extra large Firebird, for example, I think has like a 77 degree seat tube angle where this size small has a 76, right? Um, and that's because the taller you get, that saddle gets up here higher. And you know, if you're, you got your saddle all the way up here and you're six foot three or whatever, you're sitting out here over your rear axle. That's no good. So they scoot it forward on those taller, on those longer bikes for those taller, taller riders, right? Um, that short chain stay makes this bike get through stuff so quickly. It's just, to me, it's incredible. Now I, I know some people who are looking at buying a Firebird, you're looking to go send it like you're gonna go you're on a mission to end up in the hospital i get that that's not my style quite as much i like to go fast and i like to hit you know I, I go up to about a five foot drop is about where i'm kind of like eh, i'm good um but i know people want to send it on this bike so they want like this bike that's incredibly stable this bike is stable it's not as stable as the the, the sb150 or the mega tower though those bikes are those, those bikes are, are probably more stable than this bike. This is more fun though, a lot more fun and rewarding to ride. On the trails that you see in the video today, I hit speeds over 30 miles per hour, kind of go through some, you know, six inch to about a foot and a half chundery sections of trail. There's no real big drops. There's some big jumps that you drop about 20 feet in length or 25 feet in length. But, um, you know, 
Truly, these trails in the video today don't do this bike justice. It doesn't do my Rocky Mountain altitude justice either, but we still end up riding these trails, you guys. Be honest with yourselves. We end up riding these awesome, big, long travel enduro, you know, bikes on regular trails. And this is gonna do it better than most. It climbs incredibly well. Like, I, I, I went and rode this uh, last week with my buddy Tyler. We switched back and forth between the switchblade and this. And yeah, the switchblade felt maybe just a little bit, a little bit better, right? You know, it, the switchblade's better. But this is not bad by any means. I would love to ride this back to back uh, with the SB150. And I think this would put that 150 into the ground. Uh, it climbs, climbs well for a, a long travel bike. I don't really want to go do 30 miles on it every week, but I could, you know, I wouldn't, but I could. I'd rather be on the, the switchblade probably for, for a mission like that. But, you know, for getting rowdy, this is a lot of fun. It's easy to move around on the trail. The, the rear end fell is practically bottomless. Just, just so good, so deep. Um, I would say, I would say, in my opinion, this is one of the, the best long travel trail bikes you can buy right now because most of the time we're not going crazy and uh and i think it would be fine for that too i'd have to wait till next spring to go try it out maybe maybe that's what we do as we go do that but it's incredibly stable confidence inspiring um i think for the person i think about who's going to buy this bike um you'd really have to be sending it you know, at higher speeds. Otherwise you're better off going with the switchblade for your everyday trail rides. But you know, that's, that's really what this bike is about is just going faster. This bike wakes up at a little bit higher speed than the switchblade, right? Um, and starts to come alive. But, oh man, these big bikes are so much fun. I feel like I'm rambling about that, but this bike, I, I just, I guess I was surprised. I was expecting it to be kind of more boring. And uh, because the last one was, right? The last one was just kind of like, eh. You know, this one, I feel like I'm sitting down in the bike. I feel like I'm the, the pilot, not the passenger on this bike. I don't feel like I'm sitting on top of it. I just, I felt good. The rear end comes around really fast. Um, Pivot's been building these bikes with shorter chainstays uh, lately. Even in the Trail 429, it's a pretty short chainstay for a 29er. And I think that makes it a really fun bike. Um, where this is different, um, you know, I've, I've already compared it kind of a little bit to the Mega Tower and the, the SB150, but um, where it's different is it, it climbs just a scooch better. And so it makes for a better trail bike just in that regard, but then it's just more playful. I mean, I hate to use the word playful too much on a big long travel bike like this because it's incredibly stable, holds a line much better than the switchblade. Okay, I'm just gonna say this. The other day when I was riding, this is the thought that kept coming back to me when I was switching between this and the switchblade. And this is gonna sound terrible because I loved the switchblade. <sighs> If it were me, I would either go Trail 429 or I'd go Firebird. I know that sounds bad because I love the Switchblade. I thought the Switchblade was the trail bike. But man, I'd say if your speeds are really high, grab a Firebird over the Switchblade. If your speeds are not super high, that Trail 429 can do so much that, that even the Switchblade can do. That, that Trail 429 kind of it, it kind of put the switchblade out of the market in my opinion. I know that sounds terrible, but that's what I would do. I would either pick between the Firebird because it's so good or the Trail 429. Um, you feel like you're in a good position when you're climbing, like when you're actually really, really climbing, like you're sweating and you're getting up the trail fast. You feel like you're in a really good spot right here. Um, I think the size small for me just worked out so well at five foot eight. 445 millimeter reach was was bang on. I mean, the medium would have felt way too big. And so, yeah, I'm stoked on this bike. I'm excited to put more miles on it. I've had a couple chances to ride it now. Um, you can pick this bike up from Salt Cycles in Sandy, Utah. That's where I got the demo from. They've got these in stock. They're in boxes sitting up there. So give Chris a call at Salt Cycles. Uh, they're one of Pivot's largest dealers and they can customize it too if you want. This ended up being the XT XTR pro build i think is the one i'm on um has a fox 38 on there it's the first time i've ridden a fox 38 that was fun and it has the uh, reynolds carbons wheels but man i just i guess i'm shocked i'm shocked at how good of trail manners this bike has it feels you know some bikes just feel like total enduro bikes um and then other bikes just feel like trail bikes this feels like a trail bike to me a longer travel trail bike but it feels smoother and more damp than the uh, switchblade um, 
you know, in the rear end. It just feels planted and controlled and good. I really liked that. Um, some bikes can feel a little vague or a little dull or boring. This didn't at all. And, and who knows, maybe it's because I'm riding the size small, but I thought it was a, I thought it was a killer fit. Anyway, leave a comment in the, in the section down below, in the comment section down below if you've ridden the bike. If you have any questions about the bike that you didn't get answered in this video, put it in that section down below and we'll answer it for you. Uh, thanks to Lab Austairs for supporting me and sponsoring this video. And thanks to Salt Cycles for always having these awesome bikes in stock for me to, to go out and ride. Um, they, they, they do bikes better than anybody. The I mean, nicest guys to work with too. So give Chris a call over there and, and get a Firebird ordered up. Yeah, I can't believe I said that on camera. I think I would choose either the Firebird or the Trail 429 and maybe pass on the Switchblade depending on your speed and trail uh, you know, terrain. Um, and then when it comes down to long travel bikes, man, some of these things are getting so long and so big, um, you need to downsize maybe a little bit like I did here on this size small. It was perfect. Um, and the other thing is like, you know, be honest with yourself on your speed. If you're not doing Red Bull Rampage, I mean, those guys are on downhill bikes, but you get what I'm saying. I just think, I, I think it's smart that Pivot built a bike that's so much fun on even the more tame trails. It's really rewarding to ride on even the tame trails, and that's nice. It's a bike that you can go ride more places than the Yeti SB150. I'll just say that. For the last three years, the Yeti SB150 has been a bike that I always wanted to buy, but never actually bought because where the crap am I gonna ride that thing? You gotta be going mock chicken all the time to ride that thing, it's just too much bike. Um, it's not as rewarding to ride on, on the more trails, the trails I have more access to, right? This is a bike that I could actually see myself buying and riding as my long travel bike. It kind of kind of reminds me of my Rocky Mountain Altitude, it's just the, the bike is more accessible, I guess. Anyway, hope I didn't add more confusion to your purchase process. Hopefully I helped you out. I know we start to analyze stuff so much it can just seem overwhelming, but uh, yeah, this was a cool bike. Anyway, we'll see you in the comments.